Hello and welcome to Intuitive Nature, the podcast. My name is Susan Jane and I believe that trusting your intuition is the best way to live your life with meaning and purpose. Each week you will hear about how you can connect, develop and trust your intuition through meditations, readings and my own personal experiences. Join me to understand how your intuition can guide you towards a life full of meaning and loving purpose. Hello and welcome to The Art of Intuition. Um, I really do need to get that front bit changed and fixed up, but until I've got all the logos and everything coming in, it's going to be that to start with. So I'm Susan Jane, the Intuitist, and today I've got a very special lady on. Now, this lady, she is halfway around the world. She's right over near the UK side. Um, they've just gone into daylight savings, whereas we are just about coming out of daylight savings. So there was a lot of um, toing and froing with all the emails trying to get our times right. So it's nighttime here, daytime over there. But um, Esther Apol, oh no, you was going to do this. I knew I'd get your name wrong. Apostidis, no, can't do it. <laughs> she's laughing at me. I can see her. Um, she's going to tell you what her real name is. I am just going to tell you all about what she's talking about because it's really, really interesting. So she wants to talk to you about connecting with your heart center. Now she wants to talk about her heart story because she has so many painful lessons because she was ignoring her heart stories or her heart messages and going along with the head. So there was lots of areas in her life that she was um, struggling with and having trouble with and listening to the wrong part of the body. So I am going to introduce, now there's some take homes here too because she's got, gonna give you some tips on how, how to use the right energy uh, how to take on the appropriate actions and, and things like that. So you're going to really enjoy Esther's story. Um, but for no further ado, now the first thing she's going to do is tell me how to say her name again. So welcome on board, Esther. Hello, hello. Thank I'm you so, so much. Sorry. <laughs> That's totally fine. Uh, most people do stumble over the surname. It's, it's quite an unusual Greek name, or not really unusual Greek, but obviously unusual for the rest of the world. So it's um, es Esther Apicidis. So thanks to my lovely husband, <laughs> whom I met, um, oh gosh, it's nearly 30 years ago now. It's crazy. We've been married uh, 28 years. <laughs> oh, it's mad. Oh, <laughs> yeah. no. Oh, that's yes. I am so sorry about that. Um, but first of all, just tell us a little bit about you and about um, what you do. Right. I am uh, an energy transformation and business performance coach. So what that means is that I've trained in a special modality called the energy alignment method. And it's a special system where we use um, the body as an indicator of what's going on with our energy. And it's a biofeedback mechanism, a form of applied kinesiology, if you like. Um, but it's literally um, asking what's going on, what the, what resistances are happening in, in our energy, whether it's in our thoughts, our emotions, um, whether it's just an abstract form of energy. But we just, just interrogate it to a certain degree and we we just find out if there's anything attached to that, some sort of emotional or, or painful history, um, um, or just literally passed on from generation to generation as a pattern, as a recurring pattern. And then we just release that in a very, very simple step um, and then align to something that's high energy or high what we call high vibration energy. Um, so it's taking them on an emotional scale from feeling, feeling it's quite low to very, very high. Um, the so, and then in terms of the business side of it, then I wear my marketing hat. So I uh, worked in the corporate field. Oh gosh, um, oh twenty five years plus in marketing area. So the beauty of combining the two is that the marketing works very, very well. And, from an emotional perspective, because people buy with their hearts, not with their heads. Yeah. So using this um, system to, first of all, get out of our own way, <laughs> to say <laughs> that we are good enough, um, that we can do this work, and uh, and then really, really just tapping into, as I said, into the heart um, and how we sort of pitch ourselves, but really from a, a, a nurturing place, willing, you know, stepping into our powers, nurturing ourselves in the process, 
Mm-hmm. So not going to overdrive and to what we call the masculine energy, the push, push, strive and struggle and focusing always on the, on the end result rather than in, on the journey. And that's where I take my clients. I let, literally take them into the journey of it, enjoying the process and focusing on real that deep connection, that radical empathy with their cl- clients. So that's how I work with their clients to optimize their the way they step into their business, the way they show up and, um, and obviously how they serve their clients then or p- prospects. So, so when you're doing this energy transformation, Esther, can you do this? Um, do you need to be one on one, or can you do it like um, over the ethers, uh, over the internet? Um, like, yeah, because you're talking about kinesiology, and I know that's a one on one. You've got to be feeling the muscles and the re- the resistance to the muscles. So, how does yours? How does this work? It doesn't need that actually to that degree. Um, so, what I do do is actually. You can, I, we, I can do this in a group. I can show people what to do uh, and um, encourage them just to tap into what's going on. Uh, you know, uh, first of all, I take them actually out of their head by t- doing some breathing exercises, breathing into their heart space, connecting back to their body so that they understand what's going on. And, and the body then is more likely to respond. So the body is used as a type of pendulum. It's a sway mechanism. It's not actually just um, so much as like hold your arm up and push it and test whether it sees it's going to resist or, or going to just collapse, you know. That's that's the more <clears throat> straightforward kinesiology. This is very much them doing it for themselves. So I tell them the five steps of the approach and uh, explain. But uh, what I found is that going back and doing it one-on-one, first of all, is actually easier for them because they can then understand the types of questions relevant to them that actually speak more to them because words Uh, actually have a very very powerful energy and and the way they connect with our body um so that comes back to this self-dialogue what we talk to ourselves every day is so important um Mm -hmm. and because words are the most powerful form of energy and so I, I encourage them to sort of say, well, this is my script for you. You can actually then tweak it how it suits you. I mean, it can be done. In, we, we do do it in a group. I have done it in group, but I've also done it one to one. So, um, yeah, it, and it does really work over the um, over the Internet really well. I do it on the Zoom calls. And, um, and I was amazed, actually, because I thought I, before we'd always done it in person when we do this training because we go on a location and we practice on each other and um and i just thought i don't know whether i can do this <laughs> over a zoom call but actually i found it easier believe yeah. it or not um and uh, in a way it is yeah. it's so much easier when you don't know because you well that's when you are really digging into your intuition and getting that information properly exactly so yeah yeah and, and the thing is you take your head out of it in a way you just let, open yourself up to allowing whatever will be will be be you know and um this is very much following as you say the, your intuition your instincts yeah yeah oh lovely all right so you i want to ask you now i've got my little list over here i want to ask you about your heart story and the painful lessons you learned um because of ignoring that heart that heart story um and and i'd love to understand uh how that links with your energy transformation uh, you know like yeah. what's happened to you and how that's helped you how your energy transformation has helped yeah, definitely. Because all these episodes I'm talking to talk to you about is uh, actually happened before I started training in um, uh, therapies in any type of holistic therapy and also this particular um, um, energy alignment method system. Um, so I go back now to I was running a coffee shop business in my local town um, for five years between 20, uh, 2010 and 2015. And uh, we also started. So it was one, it was, I'll, I'll tell the more recent story. So going back to 2000, November 2014, I had just returned from a, a sort of six day trip to southern Spain. With my, I went there with my mother and it was my, the gift, my 50th birthday gift from my eldest son who had actually um, done some acting and had got a lot of money for going to a Nike advert which actually his bit got cut out of in the end, got, ended up on the editing floor. So uh, he was devastated, but he got literally four or five grand for that work. And he, well, he filmed in London and filmed in Madrid and Barcelona. So he actually got to travel for that, but he, that was his story anyway. But he, as a, he's so 
such a loving son. He paid for me and I hadn't been on a holiday since I started my business. We're talking over four years. And, um, I, I, you know, it was so, so meant a lot to me. But when I went abroad, my mother was already struggling with her health. Um, she had a long term diagnosis of a lymphatic leukemia. So she had had lots of uh, treatments over the years. Um, and all her lymph glands were sort of uh, inflamed, swollen. Um, but she was determined that she was going to be healthy enough to go with me. And for her, it was a trip down memory lane. She'd been there with my dad, who passed away many, many years before, uh, because she'd gone to the same places like Rhonda, um, Grin um, Seville. Um, we ended up staying in a place near Malaga. Um, beautiful, beautiful place. And... Um, Unfortunately, we we did we booked in some trips and um, we you know I on my actual fiftieth birthday I spent alone in the hotel in the evening eating my <laughs> dinner and and she said when I went upstairs because she wasn't well enough she was in her bedroom she said no. I can't take I know I know and then she said afterwards oh she said I just remembered I made this cake it was a fruit cake and she said I made this cake for you and I nearly forgot to give it to you on your birthday <laughs> but she said I'm so sorry but she was just not well at all and mm. so we struggle you know to. Uh, you know, the first part of the holiday was fine. We did probably too much walking for her. And I didn't realise how debilitated, how weak she was until actually we started getting halfway through the holiday. But then to cut a short, um, a long story short, we got back home and my brother then got, you know, the next day she actually checked herself into the hospital, which wasn't very well. But it was in the local hospital and she didn't really like it then. She had bad memories of it from when my dad spent his last few days there. So she sort of checked herself back out two days later and went back to the Cardiff hospital, um, the Heath, where she had been under haematologists. And so, but she never came back out of that hospital. Um, and it was one particular evening. It was, um, I'd seen her the Saturday immediately following, come back for the holiday. So a week after, got, just under a week after. And then I thought I'm going to go and visit her the following Saturday because my, my week was jam packed. I was running this coffee shop full time. I had a, three boys. Um, the eldest was like 17. The, the middle one was uh, 11 and the youngest was like um, four or five years old. Quite young mm -hmm. still. Yeah. yeah. Uh, big gaps between them. But, yeah. um, so I was there busy in the coffee shop and I was just actually um, on closing down, cl clearing away. My son had already left and I was there on my own. It was nice and tranquil and quiet. And, the, you know, I, I had this absolute overwhelming. And I, every time I read it, I'm thinking, I can't believe how strong this compulsion, this urge was within me. Something's telling me, go and see your mum. And I hadn't planned to go that. It was a Thursday evening and I hadn't planned to go and see her until the Saturday. Uh, and I just squashed that. I just thought, oh, no. I, then the head kicked in. I thought, no, by the time I finish here, by the time I pick up some provisions on the way home for the next day, like bread, milk and whatever, um, by the time I go home and make the boys some food, because uh, my husband travelled away a lot at the time, um, and I just wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be able, no, he actually was running our other shop as well, that's another story, <laughs> um, and um, I wouldn't have time, I'd have literally, because it was 25 mile, uh, yeah, 20, it was a 25 minute j uh, car journey to Cardiff from where we lived and where we had the shop, uh, so I thought, I just, 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 justified it it wouldn't be worth my time by the time mm -hmm. i arrived we had 20 minutes visiting time and that would not be enough for me i wanted li literally at least a half an hour so i decided to knock that on the head i decided not to do it and then the following day i, I actually my son had gone in early to open up um, it was already getting busy because it's a Friday. It was a market day in our local town, so outdoor market. So it's a busier day in the shop. We were serving, starting to serve the first coffee, coffees. So I went to pick up something, some produce again from Iceland. I just remembered I'd forgotten a few things, went to the shop, and then my son, I just knew something was wrong. He just said, Mum, Mum. Your, your brother, you know, his uncle, just sort of turned up. And I said, what? What? what what's he? What, why is he to showed up? And he said, you need to go to the hospital right now, right now. And then the customers could see. And I was like, literally, he said, something bad's happened. And I just like, oh, my God, you know, that sinking feeling. And the customers were like showing up. And you, they, I must have seen. 
it must have shown on my face, you know, it must have been ashen or, or absolutely drained of colour. And, I, you know, I was like choking up and they said, can we do anything for you? And she said, I just, and they said, just go, just go, leave your bags here, just go. So I literally, you know how it is when you're in a flap and you know something's wrong and you don't quite know what it is. Yeah. And I was struggling to get find my keys in my bag and I was all a nervous wreck trying to get back to the car park, go into the car. And literally there was this like onslaught of red lights. And I thought, this journey seems interminable. It just does doesn't seem to be I mean, I'm struggling, you know, and then finding a space in the car park uh, of the, the hospital. And then it was like me thinking, I wish I'd just trusted myself to go where she normally is. But I ha had mm. felt I had to go back to the desk to say, well, where is my mother? Just to check where she is. But it turned out, so I had to wait in the queue. <laughs> and I oh, all the time thinking, God. oh my God, what's going on? You know, I need to know. But I had to check first. That was my head thinking, oh, you need to ascertain where she is. Yeah. And in the, in the end, it was, she was where she oh, had always left her, you know, in the, in, the, uh, in the same ward. So I literally legged it. I couldn't, you know, it was kind of like walking through tree kill. I was literally trying to go through the motions of getting from A to B. And, um, and I couldn't believe I turned up and, you know, I, my mother, I just, I didn't know what happened. She'd had a stroke that morning at seven o'clock and uh, I didn't realise how severe it was. And well, the doctors came in, they just said it is very, very bad. Um, and she had already sort of was slipping out of consciousness. And I just like to think when I grabbed her hand, as soon as I got in, I said, mum, mum, I'm here for you. Can you hear me? Can you hear? Me? And I felt a bit of a squeeze. And that was the last response I had because she died then later that after day uh, at two o'clock in the afternoon. I had arrived about um, uh, about 10 o'clock, you know, by the time I got into the ward. So uh, yeah, she had had a, a stroke at seven o'clock. So she, her, she was just slipping, slipping away. Um, oh. and, then, and the diagnosis was that, you know, it, the stroke was brought on by the fact that her whole immune system had shut down literally she was just fighting mm -hmm. this virus and uh, there was no immune system there's no system there to, to fight it off um, this was like the the final bit of pill bit of pill really for her so um yeah it was a real painful lesson but it was such a strong emotion that night before i just and that's when I thought, my God, something, there was a message there for me. And that's mm -hmm. the intuitive part, isn't it? If I don't listen to that <laughs> intuition. Yeah, I was really. really I'm going, oh, this is what I'm, I sort of try and teach people. It, it's following those feelings. And, and like you say, you, you're getting an understanding. And, and I love having people like yourself on here that really know what it's about. And, and you can call it whatever you like and, and present it however you like. It doesn't matter. It's all sort of the same. But what I really like is the fact that if somebody doesn't understand how I present it, they can understand how my guests present it. And, and that really made sense to me, that feeling that you get, that overwhelming heart feeling of there's something, there's something going on. Yeah, you can't then, put your finger on it, but you know there's something. Yeah, and then yeah. your head, your stupid head kicks in and goes, oh, no, that's not likely to be happening. Oh, no, you can't do it yet. Oh, no, there's not enough time. And, and yeah, it's just, and then, of course, then you start getting the remorse later on. If you were lucky enough to get there in time and all the rest, but then there's that other remorse thinking, well, if I had done that, if I'd listened and followed, I could have, you know, been there. So, so in, in that context, how does the energy transformation, how is what you're doing, how does that help you? Right, okay, so what happens after that? I mean, we, I, and actually the second heart story was the year before my husband and I, it, um, he, we did all the research, I did all the head analysis, you know, this looked good on paper. We decided to invest in a second shop in our capital city of Cardiff. And, um, but we did all the research, it looked good on paper. My husband did all the research while I was still running the other shop. And it was, again, similar. I, I was literally thinking, this looks great, it's great, you know, it's gonna work. And people were telling us, yeah, you, you've got a fabulous concept, it's gonna roll out, it's gonna really, really rock here. And, but there was something within me, there was a niggling doubt. I don't know what it was. I just felt something was off. Don't know what it was, couldn't put a finger on it, and something was off. And to, again, that was my sort of instinct or my heart telling me to just back off, you know. And it was actually two weeks into opening our shop, um, we had so many delays, actually. There were so many 
this what I call resistances, you know, <laughs> happening in their energy. Um, but, um, you know, first of all, we had a problem with the boil. It kept breaking down. We could open up in time for the summer months because we were in the tourist part of Cardiff as well. So we lost all the tourism trade. We opened up in September and then two weeks within opening, my mother's, um, my husband's mother uh, actually collapsed in Greece. So he had to go over there. We entrusted the running of the shop to virtual strangers. We're not long known them, only a couple of months before. Um, so it was a but we, we just went literally, the money was going out faster than it was coming in. Uh, we had a bit of a sort of a, a backup, you know, uh, pile of money, you know, just in case, just to keep us going. Um, but we just had to sort of call it a day. Um, my husband's health was taking a nosedive uh, and he was stressed about his mother. He was, mine wasn't on it. And again, it's all about your focus as well, where your, that, you know, your energy goes, where your focus goes. And, mm. um, and therefore the business didn't actually run perfectly well. So I know all about this because of the energy work that I do. I'm more energy aware so uh coming out of that business you know we sold the first the one and then the second shop literally I, and my heart wasn't in it again after i lost my mother it was just something and i was always in too much in frenetic activity not respecting my energy i know that now um i was really on burnout <clears throat> So we decided to to move on. And I was in this quandary. I was in the industry. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I started working with a network marketing company. Uh, I've always had a passion for having good products for the skin because I've had problems um, through most of my life, but certainly through the early years, you know, uh, teens and 20s with problems spots and everything so i was very very fascinated so i got into the skincare product company and then i thought oh what can i do with this I, i'd love to learn a skill that can i can use these products so i went i did a beauty and massage course so that's how i got into yeah, therapies yeah. and through that i connected with different people on the internet yeah. um through facebook and then all of a sudden this lady was talking about it she was in this very regal setting this majestic house you know it was like mansion type setting in the beautiful garden saying um, she was talking about this energy system about how amazing it was and I her face was a glow and I really respond to people whose face light up and I think oh my god this sounds compelling this sounds really interesting what she's talking about so I messaged her I you know I don't know how we connected in the first place who knows it doesn't matter but she just said no you need to speak to the originator of this system it's uh, Vet Taylor so I then linked with her and she said oh just in time and I always believe things happen for a reason she said just in time we've got this free um uh, five days to no no it was 14 days at the time they did a subsequently a five days to flow but we've got a 14 to days to flow program it's free online so i said yes sign me up i'll do it and of course then i got hooked to into using this i was really fascinated um by her video she's very good on on screen or camera and um they were so they were recorded but then at the end, she follows up with an, uh, a call. And that's how I got signed up to do their 10-month program. And you just go through a, a series of it, – it's a 10-month journey because the whole energy alignment method is broken down to 10 components. So the first three components are all to do with your soul work. So what we call your soul work. So we work on your different layers of energy, so your thoughts, your emotions, and your um, – yeah, and your physical being and then in the middle you talk about your relationships your, your connection with the outside world your relationships then your lifestyle how that impacts your hobbies how that impacts your energy and then the last part of the journey the last sort of segment third part of the journey is all about your passion purpose and your impact in the world so how you're here to serve um, and identifying what that is and also we use the energy alignment method system as well to find out what am I worth energetically you know and you actually mm -hmm. check because people um and i've helped recently on another um lady coaches group um supporting her uh, students and she said oh would you they seem to be interested they, um, in a free call with you so i offered them a free group session at, precisely for this purpose because they were struggling what should i charge for my course what should i offer them and i said it's all the answers are all within you respectively but uh, there is a big but a caveat because it all depends on where you are with your energy. So if there's resistant energy and if there's quite a lot of heavy stuck energy, you're going to, your actually expectation of earning is going to be far less mm. than when you actually release that. So we work on releasing whatever's stopping them. And it's like a muscle. I mean, the ability to earn money is like a muscle. We've got to flex it. So that's why I said you may be only able to reach that 
um, that level at the moment, but it's like a, it's a case of keep releasing every single time and then you'll be able to stretch that muscle and then you can uh, charge a bit more. So I said, whenever it feels too comfortable or you think, oh, I, I think I can manage that, then stretch it because that's the only way you can stretch that muscle. Just stretch it a little bit more, maybe 20% more, 30% more. I would say mm -hmm. even 30%, just up it a bit more until it feels a little bit uncomfortable because the tension is good. It's positive tension because it's mm -hmm. also stretching your, your your energy muscle of attraction. Um, so I said that that's really key. So I, I, you know, and I got involved then. I went in from the 10 month program. I signed up literally without hesitation and doing the mentoring course, which is just, just over, well, it took me just over a year because it's, it's something I've done it shorter because, um, I did it in just over a year because I was ready. I was working full time as a marketing manager and I was actually running my own because I started, I took over a therapy center in Cardiff um, practicing therapy. So I was doing that in the evenings and on the weekend alongside another therapist who got her to cover the day slots. So I was running that as a part time business as well as full time marketing manager. And the only thing that changed was COVID. COVID shut that down, my own business, and it put me on furlough. Subsequently, I went through redundancy last September. And then I realized that this was a, like, again, this time I didn't ignore it um, because I'd really tuned into my heart. And I thought I, I had a little bit of an experiment. So sort of, I applied for a couple of jobs, corporate jobs again, going back in. But, you know, I felt flat. And I really this time, because I'm working more with energy, I just knew it was wrong. Just the whole body felt a little bit dense, a little bit. Um, no, I just don't feel right. It really feels uncomfortable. Not, uncom not uncomfortable, but it just feels wrong. Um, and yeah, this, this contraction of the energy, you feel it, your body feels like it's, it's, it's leaning forward in on itself. When you think about something, when I thought about going back into the corporate world, you know, and, and running, uh, you know, operating to somebody else's agenda, and I just thought, this is not me, This I'm called to do something else. And then as soon as I decided I was going to put that to one side and just ignore all the LinkedIn alerts for jobs, <laughs> and I literally stopped that and ignored it, I deleted them or whatever. And then when this, and it's only really since January that I've literally stopped looking. And because I've stopped looking, I, the clients have started to come in. It's really strange yeah. because, yeah. and it's all about where your focus is and, and how yeah. what make what lifts yourself. You know, you feel a upliftment. There is obviously there is we are programmed to always needing that security. But when you really think that the employed uh, world is actually not that secure, especially today, there's no guarantees. Even the big companies like John Lewis here has like, has asked in so many jobs. When you think that, and then when you realize that you have all the power within to transform your life, you can actually use and through your energy as a conduit or the way of uh, tapping in. Yeah. Can I just ask you something, Esther? You you were talking about um, going into work, and, and I think this can relate to a lot of people, yeah. um, and I'd love to just sort of really dig down in it. So you're sure. talking about going to work where you sort of you're feeling um, heavy and, and you're feeling like something's not right. Can you, I don't know, elaborate on it? I, I know I understand the feeling, but to hear it, to verbalise it so other people can hear it, and then... When you're feeling that, so we, we can get that understanding of that feeling, how can we get to um, like a positive feeling so we can assess the difference and know to go which way? Like yeah, to go to work and to feel to feel down. Like my, my partner does the same. He goes to work, he dreads going to work. He just doesn't want to go to work. It's just not where he wants to be. But he doesn't understand the strength of feeling the positive and how much that pull is better for him. And I just like to get that understanding. If somebody's in that position where they're stuck in this job where they don't want to be, how can they change it up somehow, even if it's just about thinking a little bit positively or going into that heart centre like you're talking? How do they do that? So what does it feel like and how can they go further forward? Is that too yeah. much? Is that right? <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. It's totally fine. Um, so in, as for me, um, I know when it's it's the wrong energy because I actually have that sense of dread and reluctance. There is that sometimes. There feels like a barrier there. Um, and I, as I say, my, my heart just literally sinks really heavy. It feels heavy. Um, whenever I think about 
going back. So, so in actual fact, um, I went for a, like a second interview. So I passed the first interview stage, um, and this is going back in late December, maybe even be, beginning of January. And I, and I just kept visual, try, trying to visualize myself in this job. And I'm thinking, no, it just doesn't seem like it's real. It doesn't feel right for me. I, it's just connecting to your feelings, really. Um, and if it's that dread, if it's that, it's that, um, feeling like, uh, I don't know, I just don't feel fully alive. I feel like there's part of me that's dead, uh, thinking about doing that type of work. Then I know that's a clear message that something is off kilter, something is wrong. And the way I sort of respond to what's right, it just, when I actually, the only way you can do that to understand what the antithesis or what the alternative is, is actually to experiment and learning to let go of that fear of doing things. So it's when we actually take action that we can, because then we know, ah, then it feels like, oh, there's a lightning. There's a, I feel a bit of a lift, even though there is a bit of apprehension, apprehension and nervousness around it. But then you feel like, oh, I do actually feel a bit more expansive. I feel a little bit better about myself. Um, and it's, but it's only through taking the action. And that's what I say. You know, you've got to get uh, ready to just do a little bit, take a step forward. The only mm. way you can get out of stuck ways that, you know, out of the fear of where you are, fear that, you know, okay, this is not right, and I'm I'm fearing going back in there, but I'm also fearing of going on a different path, uh, and it's actually taking the action, as messy as that may be, it doesn't really matter because what happens when you take action, the universe some comes actually into the equation and it actually tells you if it's right because it'll give you prompts that you can then follow. Things, I mean, prompts as in it doesn't have to be what you do. Suddenly something outside, there's an opportunity comes your way or a person connects with you and you're thinking, and then you start making sense of it um, through, and then you can use your head then to just think, oh yeah, I can understand why I'm doing this then because that's, it, you know, there's a prompt there that's saying this is the right path for you. And then if it's not the right path, if this is thinking you do the action, you're thinking, and then you get sort of not sideways, then don't take that as a bad thing because actually that's just knocking you back on onto the uh, different course, onto a, a better course. And right. I, that's well, that's what actually karma is. Karma is nothing bad. It's just a, a, a way of getting you back on where you should be on your correct tra trajectory uh, mm -hmm. in life. And it's following that your true purpose and passion. And this is what I go on about in my program. It's identifying what those are um, uh, by taking the action because Dharma, for a lot of people, People wake up and say, I know what I want to do. I know what I want to be in life. I've got this grand mission. I'm going to follow that. They totally connected already from the outset, not even consciously sometimes. Uh, but the, for, for many others, the majority, I would say, including myself, because I was in the place some years ago where I thinking, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I took action uh, because I had. Uh, and what I also do as well is I help them actually just pacify them by using the energy alignment method because it sort of taps into the way you are feeling um yeah. and just um and even what's happening on a, an unconscious level in our energy and uh, and we just ask we interrogate this way to just find out is this the right next action we release any resistance first of all anything that can stop us from taking the action any fears doubts or whatever worries i release that and then actually align to taking that step and to being fully in that energy of taking that aligned action uh, with heart and it's always with this higher goal this higher purpose of serving others it's not all about and I, you know i had a client come to me and it's like uh, first of all, I, I said, well, why are you doing this? And she said, well, I just need some income. I said, that's precisely the wrong reason <laughs> because actually just chasing it for the money is um, very much, you know, it's it's going to be your undoing in the end. You know, most people actually either reach burnout or they have some other counter negative effect uh, in their life. Even if they get the money, there's something, you know, some bad stuff happening in other areas and i would say the only truly aligned path is actually stepping using realizing what you have and sometimes realizing what you have it only makes sense by taking the action and you're thinking oh god yeah and of course this brings into play into 
uh, to the fore this this stuff that I've learned or this gift that I have or what people say I'm good at then it just all these components start making sense and they bring together and they form your passion your your purpose and um and you know, I, I'm very strong believe in that. I'm just literally taking the action and then sort of seeing how that feels, connecting to back to the heart, really, always back to the heart as to how it makes you feel in any given moment doing that action. And yes, there will be apprehension sometimes because it, but then the other part of the equation is not just trusting the heart, it's also just trusting, trusting in the process, trusting that this will all pan out well if you just listen to the heart. Um, that, you know, you when you're in alignment with your heart and you're serving others, there's no wrong way, really. And just the results will come and just trusting in that, not doubting it, because the head will want to doubt every step you make. Yeah. I, well, we're going to have to close it up soon. I'm getting yeah. on ahead of time, but I just want to—I just want to reiterate what you've said. So basically, what what I took out of it is that when you're starting to feel this um, uncomfortableness, this heaviness, this this fear, this un, this not wanting to do that or be there, that's when you're starting. That's that's basically that's almost your heart saying, "Well, that's not where I want to be." So then you're saying with your um, tra energy transformation, you can get rid of those fears because majority of times we're staying in that spot because we're too scared to go to another spot. So we just stay where we are. So the energy transformation will help us get rid of some of those external fears and allow us to step around the pain or the uncomfortableness that, we, that we're um, feeling and take those small action steps uh, a bit like a pinball, you know, where you're bouncing from one to another until you get to where you need to go. Exactly. Is that, is that sort of where we're going with it? Yeah, totally, totally. You've got it in a nutshell, to be <laughs> honest. You've got it in a nutshell. And, you know, the other thing with the energy alignment method is that um, not only does it re release all that, um, the barriers to taking the next step um, or this feeling that I can't do it or I'm not good enough, um, it actually just is very, very empowering as well. So if, if you it's practice regularly you actually feel more confident so it's even great for people who feel like oh I can't be visible I can't be doing that and we work on visibility a lot in the program yeah. um it's that this especially where they feel like they've been judged by family members and <laughs> which happens yeah. a lot with you yeah. know it's like how who am I to be doing this you know my family yeah. thinks I, I, I'm going to be rubbish at this and they're thinking just don't they're, that's their expectations when you really break it down and just think those these uh, um, thoughts uh, these expectations they're not real um uh, even your own thoughts about your own inabilities because we are truly creators all of yeah. us and I, try, I keep emphasizing this with our clients you have the ability to create whatever you desire but you just have to let go of all the baggage of really that's been passed on to you a lot of it you it's not your fault because the subconscious is keeps, keeps rewiring based on our early life experiences you know even through the womb what happens when the, the emotions of our mother as well connect you know it affects us our, our fetal development and so i just so that energy too that's that's going to be exactly it's all energy time. yeah so um this is what i say it's all energy basically yep, you absolutely. can shift it we can get over it and, yeah. and we align to something really really positive empowering energy uh, and that's what we do we this the, the last step is a five step so we ask we get a response we frame we literally um yeah experience what that resistance is whether it's a visual thing for some people it's more visual for others it's more based on their way they feel the emotions the kinesthetic side or for others certainly with beliefs that have just been inherited that passed down it we call it number of resistances so we work in a mathematical that's a bit more especially with people that coming from the head who've been in the corporate world a long time we do like number of resistances and we use this way to check in how many numbers of resistances if it's quite abstract for them and they just can't feel it or see it uh, and we just then in step four release that is a special mantra that we say which is all based on neuroscience the uh, power of repetition with words and the power that's why i said words i even out loud have a stronger energy than even the Absolutely. internal dialogue. And yeah. then um, then we align in the fi final step, the fifth step, we align to something that's really, really sort of lifting them up out of that crevice, um, really taking them to a high um, energy place. Now, the beauty of that is that all about that coherence. And I talk a lot about the heart coherence, you know, because the heart 
we talk about three main, I know I'm digressing a little bit, but it's three main uh, electromagnetic centers so the head, heart, and we call a third one the HARA, which is the center of aligned action. But the HARA is very, the head, the heart is very much the very center point, it's the connector. And the heart is actually 60 times. They've actually done all this measurement through with the Heart Math Institute in California, but it's actually 60 times electrically more powerful than the brain. It has its own brain center, it has its own hormonal system, regulatory system. So it's a really, really powerful energy center. Uh, and then it also connects with, so we talk about chakras as well, with the solar practices and that being literally a power center of with you know the power of a thousand suns really um that's all about this connection to oh what the gut you know what's going on in there yeah okay what so, we're now, and we've got to get i've got to get a close it track. Up. yeah sorry <laughs> i love it i love it um and i like i said what i what i really like is that with, with all the interview guests that i have on the, the show they've, they've all got their own way of presenting and, um, and and their own little expertise on it. And, and I love that because it allows a lot bigger audience to be able to take on board the understanding of it and it's, and it's sharing it there. But before we go any further, if you want to tune in, if you want to find out more about tuning into the Heart Centre for Success and Happiness, you can join the Facebook group. I'm reading it on the bottom there called Banquet of Life. Um, and Esther is running that. Now, if you do join the Banquet of Life Facebook group, she, Facebook group she's giving away 50 free uh, powerful affirmation guides. She also, Esther also has a um, Amazon bestseller book. She is part author, is that correct? Or one yes, I'm a contributing author. There's 25 chapters. Mm -hmm. Each yep. of them are really powerful energy healers or use energy in some shape or form with their healing. Um, and yeah, it's it's this it's a series of books, but this is the the latest volume, the volume four of the um the ultimate guide to self-healing, which we've actually just launched at the beginning of March and um is really already a, a bestseller in multiple categories. Okay. Perfect. But the other, the big exciting part is the launch of your new program. So yeah. that's for the Midlife Passion Passionpreneur Program um, after Easter. Now, I've got the link up on the website. It's www.energy-transformations.com. Um, and you can get a 30% off the price for the first 10 signups if you jump onto the website and sign up there. So you have got the Facebook group. You have got energytransformations.com um, and we've got lots of things happening there. So if you want to join up with Esther, please don't hesitate. You'll love it. Um, and she can help you with basically clearing some of those blockages that you may have and helping you get a bit of an understanding of where you want to go and how you can get there too. So, yeah, I, I mean, that's that's the real basic of it. There's, there's so much more into it and I'm sure it's all on the website too. So I am going to say thank you very much. Um, one more last thing before you go. Um, so thank you very much. <laughs> it's been a real pleasure being on here. And um, I just want you to uh, just go away with the thought, don't trust your head, trust your heart. Okay. okay. All right. Well, I'm going back home. Thank you so much, Esther. Um, so I'm Susan Jane from The Art of Intuition. That's me for now. If you would like to join my Facebook group too, you can do that. It's called Intuitive Personal Development and we will have all these little uh, podcasts and videos on there too for you. So all the very best. Have a great night, day or wherever you are, whatever time you're listening to it. Um, I will say, oh, hang on, let me get my little video at the end. I will say bye for now and all the very, very best. Bye-bye.